Hello and welcome to EdTech Weekly number 201. It's a weekly webcast on education and technology on the World, Ca World Bridges Broadcasting Network. Uh, my name is Dave Cormier in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. This is John Schinker in Stowe, Ohio. And this is Jeff Lebo in Pusan, Korea. And uh, unfortunately, no Jen today, just us guys. And Dave has a problem that we're going to talk about. I do. I have a real world problem, as John would say. Um, so here's the thing, guys. Um, you know how you have these ideas and you write them down and you hand them in to people and then you kind of, you know, they go away. And then all of a sudden one day that idea comes around and you have to do something about it. You know the kind of idea I'm talking about? Yes. Ideas uh, that yeah, seem sure. very good at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got one of those. So there was this thing. I said I was going to run an open course for students, first time entrants, really targeting students in their last year of high school. And they could come in and they could take a five week course talking really the basics of what it is to be to come to university. So what's a student expected to do? What's a professor like? What's research all about anyway? Just that kind of stuff. Sim five simple topics over five weeks was the idea for the first week and then what I was going to do was build that up to a full length course and see if we couldn't offer credit for it and have it as an open course and use this as a, as a way to find out whether or not there's a way for my university to offer credit for open courses. Okay. Well, it, I'm sorry, ahead, just John? to clarify, these are high school students who would be taking the course, but they'd be earning credit in college? Potentially. Potentially. High, high school mm -hmm. credit or college credit? College credit. Okay. For a five-week course. That, no, for the next week to be doing it, for next year, it would be a 16-week course. This is just the trial year. It's a pilot. Okay. It's a pilot. Just to sort of try out the details. That's where we're heading. So we started down that road, and it's a good thing we set it up with a pilot, because it turns out that the people who would have been doing the accrediting inside my organization decided they didn't like the idea so much, they weren't quite sure how it was going to work, and, and they had grave suspicions about the possibility of pulling it off, which I think really credits their intelligence, because um, there are a lot of problems with it. It's not impossible, but, but it's, it's a long road, and if you're not passionate about it, it's not one you want to go down. So I still have a funded project I need to do something with. So it's not going away. I still have to do something, right? So I uh, have a chat with my buddy, good buddy Daniel Linz, who is the ed tech person on campus. And I say, hey, Dan, um, you know that digital literacies course you were going to teach for the professors this fall? How would you feel about running an eight-week course for your professors and have weeks three, four, five, six, and seven have them teach these students in this MOOC? So what you would have then is an eight-week faculty training course, okay? The first two weeks would be pre-weeks. Essentially, you'd be training them how just talking about what it's like to teach in an online environment, what, you know, how to develop a course and stuff like that. And then the, the faculty week three would be the students week one. And the faculty would be responsible for interacting with these students on discussion forums and in other ways that we would sort of put together and essentially use it as a, as a testing ground for the faculty to get accustomed to working online and have the students use it as a way of getting to know what faculty are like and getting to know what it's like to work in a university environment. So everybody kind of wins. The course itself gets paid essentially by the faculty training budgets inside the campus, so it's sustainable. Um, but there's a there's some complexity in here that I'm still kind of having my brain melt over. So do you understand the concept so far? Yeah, I, I have lots of questions about it. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, it, it sounds like you're you're teaching faculty who are entering the online teaching world for the first time. So they've traditionally taught in a face-to-face -face environment, and now they're moving to an online environment. And so I would be concerned that you have high school students to whom you are trying to acclimate to the university environment, but also trying to get them to come to your university. And you're throwing them into an online experience with professors who maybe aren't very familiar with teaching online. Um, and so I would be concerned there that you're not doing a good job on the marketing side of trying to sell the university and, and get students into a realistic 
um, or, or high quality program in an online environment when the faculty is just learning the stuff themselves. Okay. Um, I don't agree. Okay. I think I think the the thing that I don't think that these faculty will ever be better or worse teachers because they learn how to use the internet. I think that the problem that people run into when they first come to the internet is they don't know how to structure their courses properly. And they don't have the experience that says, "Oh, if you try to do this this way, it's simply not going to work," because nobody's going to be able to find anybody. And one of the problems that happens is you end up with too decentralized a course, and then practically speaking, people can't find each other. In a training environment, essentially what you've got is you're talking through these ideas as you go along, plus you've got two or three fac experienced facilitators in there who are going to dive in and help whenever you know there's need. So could, I think this because the structure is there, it'll help out. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Could you give us an example of what week five would look like? Uh, week five. So is... students, this third week for the students, fifth week for the mm -hmm. faculty. Well, uh, in week week five, the faculty would be uh, doing some prep work for week six. Um, they would be going through the exercises for week five that they set up the week before with the students. So if the topic that week is um, what academic research is, then the students would be doing simple assignments sort of working on that. They'd be maybe posting comments in a discussion form about something they read, and the faculty would be in there answering their questions and stuff. Uh, and sort of maybe one of the faculty from in week four had said, hey, this would be a really great way to get the students to search academic writing on Twitter and see what people are talking about and make some kind of summative response. I don't know. Um, and then we say, oh, great. And then so you try that out and they would participate in that process as well. So, you know, all you're trying to do from a faculty perspective is give them some basic understanding of what it's like to be in one of these environments so that if they're going to run one, in the in the winter they've actually been in it before they've uh, commented on stuff before they've seen that persistent presence matters and that if you don't if you ignore somebody they're gonna go away but if you engage with them they'll engage with you they see how you know maybe how discussion forums get cluttered maybe those kinds of things are gonna come up too so it's a course on facilitating courses in an online environment for the professors and it's a course on on what is university for the students or the participants and it's a low impact low um, risk type of environment because it's only a few weeks long and That's right. you're not are you not doing a like a, a credit thing at this point because not, the accreditation I don't, I don't is not there. That's so right. I don't think we're going to do that at all. You don't have to worry about have we met all of these benchmarks or jumped through all of the hoops necessary to be able to award credit. And then you also don't have to worry about all of the the things with how do we award credit to someone who's not enrolled at the university and how do we handle all tuition those dirty and all things, of those yeah. other things. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and. Sorry, what, what it's going to do then is and we're throwing up a Moodle installation. Well, we threw it up last week. We're going to turn it off at the end of the course. So mm -hmm. essentially, we don't know how we should be rolling these over, what the plan is for. So what we're going to say is, look, at the end of this course, we're going to give you the option to export your stuff, but we're deleting this because we don't want to keep this data. We don't know what to do with it yet. We're not, we're not at that place. This is really a pilot. So right. the next year, we'll probably put something in place that will make more sense. But right now, just for security's sake, just we're just going to hit the delete button on the last day. And part of this you're doing because of funding. You have some money to spend, and so you've got to spend it. Which part? What would you be doing if that were not an issue? Uh, I, actually, you know what? I really like this project. Um, uh, three months ago, I was very uns when I found out that my accreditation thing wasn't going to work out. I was very concerned about going forward with a project without a clear vision of what we were going to do. Over the last month or two, Daniel and I have banged heads for many an hour, and we've come up with this project, which I think is actually, I think it's got potential, um, and I think it's ex it's an exciting thing to try. It's not something I've ever tried before. Um, it's got that great sort of double endedness to it, where you know. <laughs> You're inside the environment, and so do we create two courses? One for the faculty, and then one for the students? Do we have them work in the same course? Do we have them, like, th there's all these really interesting questions. You know, how do you, 
call the weeks, and we've decided, for instance, our solution for the weeks is pre-week one, pre-week two, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and then post-week one, just so the numbers don't get messed up. So week one is always the third week, because otherwise it's week one for faculty and week one for students, which is actually week three for faculty. Yeah, or maybe you don't use numbers at all and you name the weeks. Yeah, butterfly yeah. week. The green week. <laughs> uh, I like it a lot, Dave. It, I, th well, I think it is very innovative. I think that's why they put innovative in your job title. And like mm -hmm. you were saying, I, I like. I think it's a learning experience for everyone. And even if it's a, a flop, something is going to be learned. Well, and I don't what? think it's going to flop. Have, I don't think it's going to flop either. We got 15 faculty registered, which is pretty good for us. Like it's that's a huge amount that's of faculty really engagement. Um, and it's free for them this year. Uh, next year we may charge them out of their faculty budgets, but not this time. I mean, we don't even know what we're promising to give them, you know. Um, I don't have any students yet. Uh, I'm banking on the fact that uh, right now we have an election here on PEI on Monday. Uh, and so you can forget getting any word out about anything in the mm -hmm. last week and today, tomorrow. So I'm hoping that in a week and a half, with my internet connections online, with um, you know, sort of making some contacts here locally that we can get, because I don't care where these students are from, right? You could be calling in from China if you want to. It doesn't make any difference to me. Good question, Teach15. Um, what is Dave's job title? Uh, I'm the Manager of Web Communications and Innovations at the University of Prince Edward Island. The manager of Innovations. It's like a modern-day Willy Wonka with uh, chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The communications part takes up more time than the innovations part, but that's just the... Yeah, I put everybody. that part in like bigger font size on my <laughs> part. <laughs> <laughs> it's neat though because it's, it's funny how all the experience that I've had running projects with World Bridges has helped sort of so much of, you know, people come in the door and they go, look, I've got this crazy plan. And I go, yeah, that's a really dumb idea. What do you mean? <laughs> well... <laughs> Let me let me walk you through how this is going to work. Oh. You're going to create this wonderful project where all of these Silo. people are going to submit wonderful new things. Like they're going to submit all their best work. And how many total could there be in the world of the people you've defined? Fifteen. Okay. Have you talked to any of them? No. Have you talked to the Department of Education? No. Do you know? Have you made contact with these people? No. Do you know how long you're going to keep the website up? What do you mean? Well, once you decide to take in all these people's content, how long are you committed to keep it running? Well, won't they keep it running? No. <laughs> it's great. I mean, well, how many, yeah, those websites that lived off the side of World Bridges for years, you know what I mean? I'm glad our years around. of uh, learning experiences was useful. <laughs> so anyway, uh, digging into the details of the project, two separate courses or one course inside of Moodle? Two. One. Ah. I would have two, but but where the one for the professors is mostly just form based. Um, which gives them a space that's separate from uh, the place where they're interacting with students that allows them to interact with the other faculty and with uh, you and Daniel and whoever else is, is helping them learn this stuff. You could set up two groups within a single course, couldn't you? You could. Why would you? I like the idea of the faculty and the students learning together. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there'll be enough segregation. It's clear who's faculty and who are students. But are you going to have all of the faculty teaching the same course? Are you, I mean, is the ideal situation that each of these 15 participants has his own group of students? And so you're running like, 15 different sections of this or seven different sections or you have 15 teachers teaching the same course at the same time with the same group of kids I, I don't know that they're used to teaching in that kind of environment or that the students are used to learning in that kind of environment hmm. it's a good question I mean, that, that, might be a, that might be a place where the groups come in where you, you take the the whole group of students and maybe you have a hundred students you can divide them up into groups and then you have two professors take each of those groups or we can do is set up 
you could set up five courses and just filter the drop the students into courses as they come in yeah but then just the group stuff don't you want one space me. for uh, if everyone wants to be in one place um, the different courses separate that yeah I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of kids um, as long as I don't get many students it's okay and you, this is being run as a MOOC? Uh, yes. Uh, how would you define it? Uh, well, I hear it's massive open online, and it's a course. Um, well, it is ma well, it may or may not end up being massive. It is going to be open and online. So it is a what, are about, what are about those participants, the people who are not faculty and not students but want to participate? And, you know, there are MOOC heads all over. They hear Dave Cormier is doing a MOOC. They're going to put on their tie-dyes yeah, and stop by. I, th I, th I think they should be able to come in. And how what are they? Tied in. What are they going to be doing that's different from either the students or faculty, or what different permissions or? I have a good question. Hmm. Your bouncing is a little distracting. <laughs> <laughs> good questions. Gonna be excited. Dave said I had a good question. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good point. I mean, I um. I really like the idea of understanding how flattening the web is in that sense where your status is not nearly as important as how much you've contributed. Um, you know, it's one of the things I really like about the open courses is every every time we have a new open course, somebody else steps up and you go, "Wow, that person's really really good." And it doesn't matter who they are. You know, I've got a there's a guy working on the ebook right now who's really fantastic. I have no idea who he is. But man, his work is solid. You know, and that's what I really love about the open stuff is the contribution. So, you know, maybe we do leave it open. And that actually, I think, pretty much settles the argument for the separate course. Because, for the faculty, because they're going to be a little blown away anyway. And without a place to, to, without a place to back up to, I think they're going to have a hard time um, understanding what's going on you know what I mean and and feeling safe and because our, our main goal here from a communication standpoint actually to, to, to address John's issue is not really to attract students but rather to train faculty so we can have more faculty ready to do that sort of online stuff certainly for me the most important outcome is those faculty being trained and so the content of the each week or the course in general is not especially UPI specific it's it's not at all okay no no it's based on those did you see those videos we made a few months back the ones yes. with the what is a student what is a those there a professor each one of expert. those is gonna yeah each one of the <laughs> each one of those is gonna headline a week so the idea is to have the video saying what are we talking about this week flip up the video there you go that's what we're talking about this week and then break it down from there I mean, I do think it's important for the UPI faculty to have a separate space where they can interact without knowing that anyone else is listening in. I don't know if another Moodle course is the way to do that. I think to get through the pilot, a Moodle course makes a lot of sense because there there's some familiarity there. Um, and it gives them an organizing platform. I think dumping them into a MOOC and saying, yes, you can communicate with one another, communicate as a group using whatever tool that you want or whatever tools makes the most sense to you might be giving them too much flexibility without but giving them enough direction. But is that separate course just going to be a mirror of something else? No, the, the, the idea of the separate course, it would, ha it would be pre-week one, pre-week two, one, two, three, four, five, post-week. But in the in that course, what you'd end up doing is um, just a second. In that course, what you'd end up doing is um, planning out the next week. So essentially, for week two, your most of your uh, pardon me pre <laughs> for pre week two, most of your time would be taken up designing week one. Right. So there's two parts right. of it for the faculty. One of them is design the next week, and the other one is do this week. Right, so you're kind of you're always in both camps. Well, and, you're, and you're reflecting on last week too at some that's, level. That's right. That's right. Of course. So what we've got set up then 
is we've got the faculty broken up, and I don't even know how hard that would, I haven't told you about this yet. What what Daniel did when he offered the course is we have one hour of face to face time with the faculty a week. Plus, hopefully, they'll work online because it's not a course, right? We're not asking them to devote a massive amount of time here. They're faculty with pre-established schedules, so they haven't like they didn't magically get more time to do this. So it's tried. It's hopefully built so that they can engage with it a little bit and still have a positive experience. Um, but we have three meeting times during the week. So if we have 15, let's say we get five on Monday, five on Tuesday, five on Friday. Any faculty get the option to come to more than one of those sessions. So the question is, is do we do the same thing all three days or do we break the faculty into groups and have one design group, one reflection group, and one um, participation group? I'd go with And the switch former. them each week. And then switch them each week. You know, this week your group's doing design. This week your group is doing participation. This week your group is doing reflection. Well, but with only three weeks that the students are participating, I mean, you're not going to have reflection in five weeks. So you're not going to have reflection for all of those. You know, it's going to be front-loaded with design. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's not like you have the same amount of stuff to do in each of those weeks. Um, maybe let them drive it. You know, you you have a certain number of things that you want to do, or you want to you want to at least address each of those with each group every week. But you know, let them in each of those sessions determine which of those is most important. Do we need to spend more time on, you know, on what's going on this week, or on what we're doing? You know, we're okay with what's going on this week, and we'll uh, debrief that next week. But right now, we really need to focus on what's happening next week, um, and let them sort of drive that in each of those sessions and they could of course be very different from one another hmm. I just teach 15's comment in the chat room there basically your goal is to train professors with online learning experience while attracting prospective students um, I would be more than happy if the students that we talk to are attracted to come to the university it's not formally meant to attract students but rather to say the, the, the communications goal there and the one that I've been very firm about it being is not let's try to get these students to come to our university but rather look at the things the university is willing to provide to the community. So it's more about one of our prime mandates at the university is community engagement um, and, and to me this is one of those ways to provide a service to the community that still serves us. So if they come, great. Um, I don't think the way that it's set up is, makes it a particularly effective recruitment tool, um, nor is it really intended to be. If people come along and they see us and they say, hey, wow, UPEI, never heard of it before, and they check it out and they want to come, oh, sure, that'd be, that's fantastic. I mean, I, obviously, that's, that's a plus, but it, it's not designed as a recruitment tool. So there's no, I say that as much to defend myself, I guess. There's no hidden what? message in the course, like there's no... Yeah, I think I had framed it as a marketing tool, and that it was not accurate. And I don't, I don't know that you necessarily said that, Dave. And see, I think this has potential to really get large, uh, non-faculty, non-UPI faculty, and non-local student involvement, because I think this is this whole idea of college prep is huge, um, mm -hmm. and I think it's something faculty all over are going to be attracted to because I think they feel like, wow, students are arriving and they're not adequately ready. And That's I right. think all these students are filling out their applications right now and full of this, oh my gosh, how am I going to do in university? So I think it has potential to get a lot of remote involvement. Um, and I'm curious <laughs> to hear more about how you would in, how that would play out. Like if I got too many people? Not if you got too many people, <laughs> but let's say you have 100 students who from around the world who think, oh, this is cool, and 200 faculty who are tuned in. Uh, how do they engage and how, are they doing the same things as everyone else are they if, if it's a remote faculty do they get invited to the separate course where they can participate in the planning and reflecting and all that I think if that happens the first thing I'll do is I'll break my arm doing one of these um, <laughs> and, and I'll probably have a really sore shoulder the next day uh, yeah that'd be fantastic um, 
you know, those are the kinds of problems you're always looking to deal with, particularly in a short-term thing where you're committed to deleting it. You know, that's that that gives me great solace. Well, you're deleting no the Moodle, what, but you're not going to be deleting distributed content. It shall live on. No, I won't be deleting the distributed content. Plus, I won't be deleting the the connections that people make outside. So, you know, and the goodwill and the fact that we'll do this again next year and all those other things. I just I don't have a plan for the continuity of the data and the idea of having a bunch of student data on my hands that right. I'm protecting all of a sudden. I don't want anything to do with it. It's going to be we're going to make best effort for security at the front end and then in 8 weeks time we're hitting the delete button. You know. Right, but, but tell me again what week 5 is going to look like. Let's say you've got, you know, decent remote involvement faculty's engaged, you've got 25 students who are also, well, is there any difference between a directly involved student or a remote MOOC involved student or same, mm -hmm. same? There's no I don't know. Hmm. No, there's no special status, right? Because there's no, we, I haven't the foggiest idea what's going to happen. Um, so I'm more than content, particularly as there's nobody's money on the line here. Uh, if if for the grant for the money that was paid for this grant, if we get a bunch of faculty engaged and you know learn a whole bunch of stuff about how this stuff works, it's going to be more than well. They're going to be more than content with that. There's no problem really. Um, so I'm not worried about that, which lead puts me in a position where I think, okay, uh, we meet with the faculty for the first time tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow at noon. Because we're starting this this week, this pre pre week one is Monday, um, and actually there's a. Did you guys see the syllabus? No, no. I have a syllabus. All right, well, let, let's take a look at that and start again. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if I can find it. That's. So yeah, we've got. Uh, but I, I figure we'll, a lot of this is going to be guided by how the uh, how, how the faculty respond, right? They may get involved in this and go, wow, we should really do more of this engagement stuff. I think, you know, the fact that these faculty are from all over the world and they're interested in joining in just makes me really excited. And then maybe we go, oh, well, if that's the case, well, let's, you know, let's open the floodgates on this thing. So this so coming this week is pre-week one? Pre-week one, yeah. And so if people wanted to participate, they could as professors or as people who are interested in learning how to facilitate a MOOC or teach online? No, they can join okay. not the teacher's course, but the student's course. The student's course. Uh, so taking an online course on how to um, basically survive in, in a university environment or That's right. intro to university. And you're looking That's for right. students to participate and how would they do that if you... You know, say you were doing a webcast or something, and a bunch of teachers were listening in, and they all know some students who might be interested in doing this. Good question. Um, as of now, we only got the Moodle environment set up on Friday. So mm -hmm. what they would do is go to upei.ca/experienceu, and hopefully by Monday morning, I will have the instructions posted on how they can actually join. Um, did anybody see where I put my chat room? No. It's on the right. <laughs> yeah. It's under, so it's under if, the headset. <laughs> it's under the headset. So if you go to, uh, this is the link to the Google Doc, for those of you who are interested. Uh, if you click on that, you'll see a um, rather rapidly drafted syllabus by one Dave Cormier. Um, there's another document behind this that Daniel and I spent a lot of time on, which is essentially we just took a, a giant spreadsheet and went, okay, weeks one to eight, who is even going to be involved in this, and what are we going to do for each of those? And we just kind of started peppering in the boxes, you know, and then finally we had enough of structure. We went, okay, I think I understand how this is going to work, and then I just kind of scribbled this out, and so week one is. Live, so this is for the faculty. Week, week three, which would be students week one, is live facilitation. Week four, persistent presence, collaborative work, research and web. And then analytics are the kind of uh, super themes for the faculty. You know, the ones that, that we're going to sort of go through that week. So with week seven analytics, when you're in Moodle, 
there's no sense talking about it in week one, right? But this is one for the faculty, John. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Yeah, that's the one for the students. That's right. Yeah, so that has the student videos on it, and like I say, I'll post the instructions for that here um, tomorrow morning. We don't have them yet, but because if the students are only starting in two weeks, right? Does that mean that week three, aka week one, the theme's going to be what's a student? Yes, that's exactly what it means. That's exactly what it means. So what's a student? What's a what's a faculty member? What's research? Those kinds of things. Uh, there's still two of them that aren't finished, but they'll be up shortly. Um, certainly, they'll be up before we need them. <laughs> <laughs> the The student who did all the videos, who and I'd like to have him do all five of them, uh, was away for this. Ended up being away for the summer, so we didn't get them done. I hate to torture him when he just gets back to school. So right about now, he's really got the time for us to dig in and get those other two done. Um, so that's kind of how it's structured. Um, you know, week two is developing discussion forums, which you obviously are going to need if you're going to get them started in week three. You know what I mean? So the hope is is that there's a little bit of tension there, a little bit of, oh, geez, we've got to get this ready for next week. But I think that makes for fun classrooms. You know, that gives you, rather than having faculty just talking about stuff in, in the nether world, having that, that group that's coming is something that could be really interesting. What kind of time commitment are you expecting from both the faculty who are participating and also from the students? Um, I, I don't, I mean, if they were standing in front of me right now, I would come up with an answer. The, the, <laughs> the, the real answer is I don't really know. That hour a week, for sure. And then yeah. I'd like to see them do an hour, maybe two, inside of the, inside of the environments mm -hmm. during the week. It's not a lot, but if you have 15 faculty putting in an hour of time in a discussion forum, you're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know? You're doing pretty good, I think. Because I don't, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of this, like, we can get the students to each other as much as to the faculty, so, right. you know. Um, so, what was the other thing I was looking for? I forget now. Oh, okay, the Experience U one, which is a link that John already got. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think, I think there's some potential there. I think that um, my worst case scenario I'm almost over the top of it right now. As long as I get 15 or 20 students, I'll be happy. And How are you getting them? That, Where are you finding them? Um, I've got a... Um, depending on how the election goes on, on Monday, I'm going to be calling the, the Minister of Education. Um, and that, if he doesn't win, it will make it more complicated. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm going to be... Does he want to answer the phone? Or... <laughs> well, I'm going to be doing a fair amount of sort of media push as well, trying to get out there. Because, again, this is one of those times where I'm allowed to use my department, right? So I actually run, like, I'm, I'm, part, I'm a manager in a communications department. I, so I have a certain number of tools that I can work with um, to try to get attention to things, particularly when I think they're structured in such a way that, that they're at least interesting to talk about. So the university giving away a free course, teaching students how to get prepared for university, I, th I think that's something I might be able to get uh, to get some push on, particularly locally. I think um, I spent a lot of time on the radio lately. So I mean, I just I, I spent a lot of time in the radio station. <laughs> so you're gonna say, okay, kids, young people, uh, got this univer get university get acquainted experience going come to this address and register for the Moodle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then do what? And then do the uh, the work and, and, and participate according like to the way discussion question in the forum and... Um, oh, you're asking the details bit. I don't want to actually firmly declare on the practices that we're going to use inside the course until we deal with that with the faculty. <laughs> Are you going to it's, be encouraging? It hasn't been determined yet, right? Because you have a, a cohort of faculty who's going wouldn't to be, be an authentic experience if I had a predetermined. Yeah. Would you be encouraging right. distributed content where you say, "Hey, this is also a MOOC, which is this cool new education thing," and oh, start your blog? Sure. And I, I would definitely encourage the faculty to go ahead and do that, um, and anybody else who's participating to go ahead and do that. So, if you look at that first topic, and you imagine us. Th this is the whole side of this I haven't even had time to think about yet, but if that first thing is what's a student, 
I would love to see a conversation develop across the internet sphere that dug into the question of what a student really is. You know, I would love to see that process happen and then bring that broader discussion back into the course. Um, back to the faculty, back to the students, draw them, find them, and then bring them in. I think that would be fantastic. And how's that broader discussion going to happen? Is it all going to be on the Moodle? Are you going to have a newsletter? Oh, I figure it'll just, yeah, I, I, I think I'll end up navigating that via blog probably and sort of grab some stuff and say, hey, look, I saw this. But I don't think it's going to be much more formal than that. I'm not going to set up a, a daily newsletter or anything for, for a five-week um, discussion, I don't think. Uh, again, I I worry about digging too deep into this for five weeks. I don't know if it's enough time to set up infrastructure just to have it turn off again. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that Twitter is going to be able to uh, help me out. How's that? I think I a, need a good tag. A Give blog, me a tag. Yeah. A, a tag. A tag on your blog, or a tag on UPI somewhere. A publicly, I think it'd be nice to have eight posts that live on from this and direct people to what's going on each week. List a few blog posts. Point to the distributed content. How about XPU11? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was going to ask you why you needed the 2.0 in there, but you fixed it. XPU 11. And I mean, I do think you'll get, if you toss this out to the Change 11 community, I think a dozen people will be very interested, at least. And really, that's all I need, right? Mm hmm. Well, let's try that tag out. Nada. Good. I just have to tell you what I'm looking out over here. The USS George Washington is pulling out of its, its mooring. <clears throat> and so you've got helicopters circling. You've got the whole crew at attention standing on the circumference yeah. of the ship. Wow. We're, we're invading Korea again, Jeff. <laughs> it's going to feel fun. <laughs> uh, Dave, I think it would yeah. be helpful to our listening community for them to understand what you just did because that's not a process that we necessarily talk about that I think is an important one on how you chose that tag and what you mean by trying it out. Good point, John. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we need to... <laughs> sorry, um, the back channel giggle there. Um, don't go registering that before I do there, jo Jeff. All yours. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that you're going to need to do to be able to communicate across any kind of distributed course is come up with a hashtag and you want your hashtag to be as short as humanly possible and if it's short and easy to remember and it fits nicely into a tweet because you only have 140 characters the longer the tweet the worse the course is called experience you um, so XPU 11 and I had originally read 2011 which of course is just two extra characters for no reason because nobody's going to confuse it with you know 2111 so easily enough to get down to XPU 11 but you also need to make sure that nobody else is using that for something oh, else right. so then I put that into Twitter and then I clicked on it to see if it had been used and then I dropped it into um, I dropped it into a Google search and searched for that too, just to see if there is like a porn site called XPU11, just in case. Or a conference or, you know, some yep. industry group or you don't want to have your feed polluted by some other completely unrelated topic, even if it is porn. Even if it is porn. <laughs> well... So, oh, I messed stuff up. Sorry, people. This this has been really, really helpful, actually. There's a lot of things that have come out of this that um, really food for thought. This is one of those where I'll probably turn it on tomorrow morning and go, okay, let me think about this again. Which mm -hmm. which one of the good points did they bring up have I not covered over? Has, has there been anything like this out there? Not that I know of, man. Yeah, I end up with a lot of places like this where it's like people ask me that question a lot and I go, 
I haven't seen it. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just, uh, is this the USS George Washington we're about yeah, to look at I here? Yeah, I think I can get too much lighting to... Just give it a second. Give it yeah. a second. Let it adapt. I see... I see a dirty window. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> I see a filthy, filthy yeah, window. Yeah, too much dirt. Yeah, and we well, we need Jeff to talk more and Dave to talk less too, because it keeps switching. <laughs> um, yeah, cool idea, Dave. All right, should we wrap this up? Yeah, man. It's you. Uh, we don't we have to decide next week. Well, t <laughs> next week's tab topic <laughs> is going to be talk tablets. About tablets next week. <laughs> Ever since changing formats, uh, what four weeks ago now? Um, next week has always been tablets. <laughs> so I think we're never actually going to talk about tablets. We're just always going to say we're gonna. So, but tentatively, next week's tablets. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, guys. This has been really great. I appreciate it. So when's the first live event? We mookheads want to tune in. Yeah. Um. It's going to be in three weeks. Two weeks. Three weeks. It'll be three weeks, yeah. Oh, you're we not going to do, do mookie stuff for the pre-week one and two? No, I don't Gone, think so. Brother. We're doing face-to-face -face stuff there. So I don't know that I have the schedule to try to get anything done before then because I'm still working on the other MOOC. Um, so <laughs> I think I'm going to wait a little. Plus, I think it, it may be intimidating for your professors to dump them into that environment and say, oh, yeah, yeah. by the way, we invited the rest of the world to come too. Yeah, they're going to listen to Yeah, exactly. I'd rather let them get their frustrations at me out. What we've done for that first week is, uh, or actually for the whole course, is Daniel is going to play the role of faculty ombudsman and I'm going to play the role of student ombudsman. So we're going to co-teach the faculty in a sense but from a very different perspective. So I'm going to keep bringing up things like okay I understand why you want to do that but an entire course developed with self-evaluation for students doesn't actually give you a whole lot of engagement. It leaves that student feeling like you don't really care about them. Whereas Daniel might say you know, you know, organize more how a faculty's workload is structured and that kind of stuff. So hopefully, that keeps us out of each other's um, out of each other's uh, way as well. Hmm. We'll see. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys. <laughs>